long YouTube introductions are boring. And so I'm trying to do YouTube a little bit differently. In this video, I'm going to do two things. Number one, I'm going to shamelessly plug my self-hosted Minecraft servers for my community that some friends and I keep up with that you can come join. And second of all, I'm going to show you step by step, start to finish how to create your own Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved server on Windows. Since this video has no sponsor, I wanted to take a quick second to tell you a little bit about a project that I've been working on. Every single video on my YouTube channel that has done even remotely well has either been centered around my home lab or around Minecraft. And because of that, I started thinking, what could I do to combine these two subjects and provide something to you, the viewer, that would actually be valuable? The more I thought about it, the more I realized that it could potentially be relatively difficult for somebody to run both a dedicated server and the client side of a mod pack at the exact same time. And so I realized I already have the hardware thanks to my home lab to be able to run a whole bunch of these servers at the same time. So why not set them up and just let you guys use them? So that's exactly what I did. I currently have one vanilla server and five different mod packs set up that are completely free to use. I have plans to set up over 20 more that will be coming out soon and again will be entirely free to you. The goal of this project is simply to allow friends to be able to play with each other on a server without one of them having to take the incredible performance hit of actually having to run that server for themselves. Again, this is totally free, so please feel free to share the server information with whoever you think might actually use it. Okay, back to the video. Now, step one is to get the server files. In order to do this, all we have to do is download the Feed the Beast app. To find this, open up Chrome, Firefox, or Internet Explorer if you're feeling real gutsy today, uh, and then search for Feed the Beast app. You click on the first link that pops up, it'll take you to this page. All you have to click is download for Windows. It'll download the program, tell you you want to keep it, and install it. Once you install it, it'll add it to your Overwolf client on your computer. You can click on Overwolf, and then click on the Feed the Beast app and it'll pull it up for you. It'll look exactly like this. So from here, we have to go find the Infinity Evolved server files. To do this, we hit Browse, search for Infin, open up the server itself, click on Versions, and it'll have a Server Files button up in the top right-hand corner. Click that. It'll open up a new tab in your browser. It'll ask you to select your operating system, which in this case is Windows, and it will then download a server installer for you. Click Keep and allow it to download. What I would highly recommend doing is creating a folder to put this file in. This will help keep your computer clean and keep everything nice and organized. Once you've created this new folder, go ahead and drag and drop the file that you just downloaded into it. Now that you have the file in the folder, we next need to make sure that we have the correct version of Java installed on the computer. Now for this server specifically, we're gonna need Java 8. In order to find this, all you have to do is open up a new tab, search for Java 8 download and click enter. You can also find the link in the description below. Now, once you're on this page, all you have to do is scroll down until you find the installer for this specific operating system that you're running. In this case, it's a Windows 64 installer. So we'll go ahead and download that. You will have to accept it and it will probably ask you to log in or create an Oracle account as well. Now, once you have Java downloaded, go ahead and install it. It's a very simple install. Just click next through the entire thing. And then once you're done, we should be done with Chrome. After that, let's go back to the folder that we had initially and double click the server installer. From here, it'll ask you if you wanna create a directory to put the files in. I kinda of already did this by creating a folder and this is basically the only thing in the folder. So we're just gonna hit enter um, and say we, we want it just in the root of where we have the installer. So from here, it'll ask you, are you sure you wanna install it? Just hit Y and hit enter again. And then past this point, you really don't have to do anything. The entire install is basically entirely hands off. It'll run through the entire list of mods for this server, download them all, get everything ready for you to where you just have to run the start.bat at the end. So once it disappears, you'll notice that you have a lot more in the folder. The important part is you just need this start.bat down here at the bottom. Double click that. It'll ask you if you want to agree with the Mojang end user license agreement. You have to do this for every single server you install. So click yes. Uh, and then it'll actually start launching your server up for the first time. Okay, it looks like it's done. The only way that you can actually tell whether it's done installing everything is if it stopped doing stuff. And every once in a while, it'll kind of just pause and then it'll keep doing stuff. So it looks like it's actually done. The first thing we want to do is we want to type in OP space, whatever your Minecraft username is. So for me, it's Joe to one who wins. So this will make you a server operator on this Feed the Beast Infinity Evolve server so that you can control and sort of uh, make decisions about what you want the server to be like. Next, let's go ahead and look at the server properties file. The first thing you want to look at in here is make sure you know the server port. Uh, that's going to be important later when we talk about port forwarding. Uh, the second thing is if you want to, you can change this line right here. It's the subtext on the multiplayer menu. When somebody adds this server, uh, basically it's 
it's the line right underneath whatever they input. So for most of mine, I put John's server in here. Uh, any other changes you want to make to this are fine. I uh, I'll probably go ahead and decrease the max number of players that we want on the server to eight, uh, just because I don't know if the hardware that I'm running this on will be able to handle any more than that. So we'll go ahead and save that, close out of the properties file. Now, in order for that to take effect, we will have to restart the server, um, but we kind of want to do that anyways. So we'll go ahead and and in the server window, we'll, hit, we'll type in stop. That'll stop the server, uh, and then we're here. In order to restart your server, you once again just have to double click the start.bat file. It will take a little while each time you try to start up the server just because there are so many different mods in these Feed the Beast mod packs that it has to load. But from here, you have the server side set up. Now, in order for a friend that does not live with you to be able to join this server, you'll have to set up port forwarding on your router for port 25565. I would provide some sort of input or tell you exactly how to do this, but unfortunately, it's specific to each router. So what I would recommend doing is Googling or looking up a YouTube video on exactly how to do this for the specific router that you have and then following those instructions. Now, once you have the server running and you have the port forwarded, that's all you have to do on your side. In order for a friend to join, they will have to come back here. They will install the Feed the Beast app just exactly like you did at the beginning. They'll browse, search for Infinity Evolve, and then they'll hit this install button. The install button will install the client side of Feed the Beast and Evolved and then it'll turn to a play button where you can actually start and run the server on your side, click the multiplayer button. In order to join your server, however, they will need your public IP address. It's an incredibly easy process. You literally just have to go to Google, Google, what is my public IP address? And the first thing that pulls up is exactly what that is. Uh, so hit the first link. It'll tell you exactly what you need to give your friends, uh, hand them your public IP address, and they will input that on the multiplayer section. So there you go. You now have an entire Infinity Evolved server set up and your friends should be able to join it. If you have any questions or technical issues, you run into any hiccups along the way, you can either join my Discord, ask me a question there, or you can leave a comment down in the comment section below. I've so far answered every single comment on my YouTube channel and I'm kind of proud about that. Also, you've already made it this far, you might as well go ahead and like and subscribe. You know, you might as well. But that's all I had for you. If you're interested in how to make an Infinity Evolved server on Linux, I'll be doing that video next.